Culture swap. Swap my culture. Liam, what did we do this time? Weren't you listening to the start of the episode where I told you? I know, but we say it every week, listen, Liam, and I, I, I don't break trends. <laughs> uh, we're doing what well, we did, the first three episodes of Ozark, which I knew nothing about going in. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, same. Uh, I'd ha- so the only thing I'd heard about it, I hadn't seen the trailer or nothing, I just heard it was like Breaking Bad meets Fargo. Now I haven't seen Fargo, yeah. and I've seen a season and a half of Breaking Bad, so... I don't know how accurate that is. Right, I've seen all of Breaking Bad, but I haven't seen Fargo. So I see where they're coming from, the Breaking Bad reference. Yeah. Um, I can't comment on the Fargo stuff. That is how I described it to someone. I, was, I, was t- I told him that I'd seen the first three episodes, and I said, it feels to me, as someone that's only seen a season and a half of Breaking Bad, it feels Breaking bad Yeah, not as good as Breaking Bad. Like, I know you have issues with Breaking Whoa, Bad. Whoa, you've pushed out the boat. What? obviously most people are going to say that it's not as good as Breaking Bad because a lot of people love Breaking Bad. Yeah. So that's not a, like a bold statement. I think that's probably most people's reaction to this. No, yeah, no, no. But what, so what I was about to lead to is you having not, you not being a fan of Breaking Bad and having not seen a lot of it. Yep. I'm curious how, like, I wonder if to like this, do you have to not like that? Do no, you, wait, so you're you saying you didn't like this? I thought it was okay. I had issues with it, Jack. Okay, well, let's, let's not, let's... Do you want to just go into it? Should we do a, a little like plot synopsis? Oh, and there will be spoilers for the first three yeah, episodes. Yeah, spoilers for the first three episodes, listeners. If you want to watch it, turn it off now. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like it's ten episodes long, so I think, even from what we've seen, I don't think we could massively spoil it in, in with the first three episode discussion. No, there's a f- couple of big things that happen, but, you know... Nothing that's going to ruin the last seven episodes for you. Exactly. Um, right, so a synopsis, basically... You've got uh, Martin, Marty Bird, who's played by Jason Bateman. He is... What's, what's his, like, job? Would he's like he's an accountant, effectively. A financial advisor, right? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, um, financial advisor. In Chicago, um, they launder money for the cartel. That goes a bit wrong. He's, his partners and his associates all get killed, uh, resulting in him having to, like, up sticks and move to Oz- the the Missouri, Missouri Ozarks. Yeah, we, yeah. The Missouri Ozarks, yeah. Under the under the orders of the cartel who yeah, want him to now launder money out there. Yeah, like he he was given this idea that out there would be this amazing place for laundering money. He kind of like smart talked his way out of being shot by the cartel and was like, "Look, you let me go out here, I'm going to make you so much money." Uh, so they let him do that, and now it's about him kind of trying to do this essentially making this bullshit thing that he just said become a reality well no he does sort of believe it right that's like I, because no, the, i don't know if he does though i think in the first episode i don't know if he believes it like oh, i know i can do it but i gen i genuinely think that at first he's like there's a chance i can do this and then he gets there and he's like oh shit <laughs> yeah well he gets there the money gets stolen <laughs> then like yeah he realizes that no one's gonna fucking work with him out there yeah. so it all does go tits up pretty quickly yeah what I do think is interesting about this is so so in other shows of this ilk where you have like a, a leading kind of character who's doing something illegal, one of the elements is always them trying to keep that from their family. And yes, I like this... that this very quickly has just been like the wife knows and, and the kids know we're here because we're laundering money for the cartel. Yeah. Which I, I think that's a really interesting uh, element to like throw into this. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I'd say that's probably one of my favourite aspects. Like, the thing that's the thing that to me makes this stand out is having that there. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think it's I think it's a really good sort of along that line. I think the best part of this show is the way it's looking at this family trying to deal with the situation. So, like the psychological aspect of it. Yeah. Like, there's interesting stuff that happens, you know, apart from that. But yeah, that that part watching like these kids try to deal with you know it's the traditional like oh we've moved somewhere shitty in the countryside yeah which kids generally are, are like oh i'm annoyed that we've had to do that yeah and then suddenly it's like yeah i get it and you're moody here's the reason we did that yeah also deal with that now which is you know that's the i mean that's the mum's fault that's not marty's fault no um can I quickly go into, into my issues because I I, I want to hear more of your takes. I want to get kind of get my bits out of the way, and then I just want to hear what you have to say. Uh, okay, go for it. So the two big issues I have, um, and I'm probably going to compare to Breaking Bad just because 
it, there's obvious comparisons there, so it'd be weird if I didn't. Yep. Um, one of the things I loved about Breaking Bad, I think a lot of people did, was it was kind of like a revelation when you saw Brian Cranston, who everyone kind of associate, associated him as being this goofy dad from Malcolm in the Middle. Yep. And the, the entire point of Breaking Bad was taking this kind of sad sap guy, giving him like a little bit of power, and just watching that poison him until essentially you see a character who starts off as likable over this course of like five years, uh, like real time, not show time, like five seasons, just become a dick. Yeah. And that was, that's like, to me, that was the joy of Breaking Bad was just watching that transformation happen. The issue I have with Ozark is Jason Bateman has very much been like cast to type. Like Jason Bateman is amazing at just playing like fast talking dicks, essentially. I don't know if that's fair to call Marty's character that. He's not like a stand up guy. No, 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 he's not. But I don't think he's like he's not he's not a bad guy. Like everything he's doing in it. Like there's the whole scene where uh the cartel are threatening to shoot him and the only thing he wants to do, like before even begging for his life, yeah. he's like, Please let I I need to leave a message for my family and tell them I love them. And that's like his first thought is I'm gonna die, I need to tell my kids and my wife that I love them. Yeah. Like and, and Which, don't like, wrong, he, I don't think it's fair to call him a dick. He does good acting as well. Like, I'm not kind of saying Jason Bateman isn't good in this. I'm just saying, it, to me, he's been cast to type. Like, this is a role that I would be like, oh yeah, it makes sense that Jason Bateman's playing this. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't get the issue of... I, I get the issue of typecasting. Yeah. But when you when you say it that way, Liam, that I get why Jason Bateman's been cast in this. Yeah, like, it's like, not that a problem. That makes sense. Like, what would, would be the point been... in them being like, fucking, get, let's get The Rock? It... <laughs> That'd have been amazing. Or Zac Efron. It would have been, but can you imagine that? That show would not make sense. Um, yeah, I, 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 I. It comes back to that. The thing I enjoy most is being surprised, and yeah, it's which always, is a ridiculous expectation to have. But yeah, it's always it's not an expectation. It's just what I enjoy the most. I don't expect it because how mm. can you expect a surprise that would then defeat the purpose of it? Wouldn't it be a surprise Touché. if you expected it? Would it? Fuck. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, the other issue, and this is an issue that happens with a lot of American shows that deal with this sort of like subject matter, where you have a leading, usually male character, usually doing something that, as an audience, we're, like, behind them doing. But if it was in, like, real-world situation, you'd be like, no, you're a dick for doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, I'm again, we're looking at Breaking Bad. We're looking at Dexter. Um, they always seem to put in, like, a wife or partner who is just, like, naggy and annoying. Not even annoying, but, like, writers tend to put in these partners who are another like hurdle for the main character who we're supposed to be behind to like get past and it's a trope that i'm just really tired of like i want to see a show where the wife is like supportive or something like isn't just an obstacle you know but i don't think you do i think you i think you want to see that and then you'll see it and you'll be like oh this this show isn't as good as no so let me let me give you a perfect example right so look at the walking dead and how annoying yeah. Laurie is at the start, yeah? Yeah. And then compare that to who Rick, without giving spoilers, is currently with. That's so much more interesting than having him be with someone who, as an audience, we're like, oh, I can't fucking stand that person. Yeah, but that's also a bad comparison in their totally different genres of thing. No, I'm, I'm just like, there's not many genres where I can think of where they've gone, uh, let's do what I'm saying needs to be done, essentially. I, I, I don't know if I agree with you. I, I, I just feel like it, it's... I don't want to kind of get on like a feminist bandwagon, but I feel like I'm just really tired of seeing like these female like matriarchal oh, yeah. characters. No, that I can definitely get behind. Yeah. That's, yeah, I 100% agree. It does annoy me when they sort of stereotypically do that with a woman's role, right? Yeah. But it also makes sense to me that it ha- like that it happens in these things because... For the story, right? Yeah. The like I said at the the one, you know, when we were talking about the bits we enjoyed, my favorite thing is watching this family try and deal with this. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That story becomes a shit ton less interesting if the wife is on board. Okay. Because suddenly you've got the two power people in the relationship are totally okay with this. Then you've got the kids who are being miserable shits, but the parents are working together to resolve it. So that that works in that favor. Like okay, I think it's but... more unbelievable if they're like, 
we're laundering money for the cartel. Yeah. But look, we've got a plan. We're working together. Don't worry, because I don't. I think it's less believable if then the teenage kids are like, "Oh, my life's ruined." I'd be like, "Well, your parents well, are fine, so chill the fuck out." I feel like they've gone to very deliberate efforts to make the wife like particularly, un- not even unlikable to, to put you against her. In that, so okay, you could initially have that like friction of her finding out what is actually going on and her not being happy, but then to add that like cheating affair element on top of it. It's just, it's like really stacking the deck unfairly against her for us as an audience to be like sympathetic to her. It is, but they're also, it seems like episode three wise, they're yeah. making her redeemable a little bit in that she's got the, like, you can see that it's fucking her up. Yeah, it's called it sh- what she's, and she's like now going like looking through. out for her kid and stuff. Yeah, I just. Like, I really like the storyline between the mum and the daughter at the moment, where it's like the daughter has flipped out of the mum because she reveals the plan and knows yeah. that she's only doing it to hurt the dad yeah i, I like so she's that. like oh mum, mum's a bitch i'm not i don't i don't like what you did either dad but at least you're not trying to poison me against her yeah which i think is an interesting take yeah i i actually uh really like the kids in this yeah they're really they're both really good i feel like jonah <laughs> he's not had a lot to do at the moment yeah and it, it, it could like fall into this trap of like it depends where they go with this whole... All we've really seen of him at the moment, like, processing this information, is he's watching a load of YouTube videos of what the cartel do to people. Yes, he's just making himself... Yeah, so it depends effectively. what they do with that, really, I think is going to be if if I like or kind of just get a bit annoyed with him. Yeah. But um, Charlotte, the daughter, who's played by Sophia Hublitz or Hublitz? Hublitz, Hublitz maybe. maybe. I don't know. Uh, she's great. Yeah. I, I mean, I like... Um, kind of like what they've done with her so far and she's very switched on which i quite like because yes. again you could have had just the whiny teenager kid and that would have got so boring so quickly yeah i think the way they dealt with that is good as well because they had that they have that moment at the motel they're staying at where she effectively fucks up and yeah. is like i'm not going to stay here and look after the stuff which she doesn't know has millions of dollars in it yeah so like they were doing that she's a whiny teenager who doesn't want to be here but yeah. then she fucks up and then sort of realises, oh, that's my fault. Mm. So I, th- I think that's a good way of dealing with it. Instead of having it drag out, they're like, no, yeah, you get to be whiny, but then you you shit up a lot of stuff, and yeah. your dad's not immediately like, I'm going to kill you. Your dad's like, I still love you, but that was stupid. Yes. Yeah, like, like, like really, like, Jason Bateman is good in this. It's just, I don't know. I, I, I haven't, I don't feel like I've seen him do anything yet that has, has kind of, I've gone, oh, that's amazing. Like I'm just like, yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I think, for me, it's more the story, right? And yeah. like the thing that I really like about what they've done with this character, I do agree with you that the mum does feel like a more stereotypical character in this. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've seen that before. Yeah. But with him and the way his character is having stuff happen, I don't know, it feels, it feels more original. Like the fact that he, you know, he's quite analytical with everything clearly tries to think things through and the fact that you know his kids fuck stuff up and yeah. instead of doing the usual like oh the dad flips out and the dad's an angry guy yeah and that's all oh, he's breaking because all the stress is breaking him like i like the way his character is dealing with stuff which is instead of being like he's getting more violent because all the stress is building up it's more like the stress is building up so he's putting a lot more on himself which just makes him like exhausted all the time and yeah. he still really wants to look after his family like i think that it would be very easy to be like, let's make this more like Breaking Bad and he just becomes a dick. And I'm really hoping that they don't do that with the next seven episodes. Yeah, I'm getting the vibe so far that that's not the route they want to go down. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like it. No. Although, but I think it is too early for us to say for certain that that won't happen. Yeah. Um, we also do have to talk about uh, Julia Garner as Ruth Langmore. Yep, yep. Because I'm very interested, like, She's already had quite, like, a lot of twists and turns to her story within, like, essentially, what, three episodes? Two episodes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and I think in the last episode, in episode three, we find out her kind of uh, like, ulterior motive. Yes, yeah. So she she originally steals the money. Yep. She's working as a maid. Yep. Gets her brothers to trick the daughter into leaving. Yep. Then waits for the son to leave as well. Then she robs them, takes one suitcase of money. Yeah, which is, I think, like, which... three million or something. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, and then Marty tracks her down mm-hmm. and has a confrontation with her and her two younger bro- or two younger brothers and is it her the other two, the older ones? Yeah. 
what's their relation? Are they like because it's that? I think they're I'm not uncle, sure if they're cousins, uncle or something. Oh yeah, she does call one uncle because her dad's in prison, right? Yes, and then it's yeah. like uncle and maybe like I don't know some sort of relative. Yeah, but that's so they've got a weird family dynamic in that she's the only girl in the family. She's the middle one. Yeah, so she's only meant to be nineteen. The character. Yeah, and but she's also the brains and like not just the brains. She's also ruthless and yes clearly quite vi- or ca- could be violent yeah like so and not uh, in an angry way in a very cold yeah you need to die now so at the moment she's kind of like managed to basically uh almost like blackmail marty into giving her a job yeah um and uh, honestly i was just watching that being like i'm really excited to see this dynamic play out because i was kind of expecting it to be like him taking her under his wing a little bit and teaching her what it is that he does yeah, that's what I was assuming as well. And then we re- it's revealed that she's just like, yeah, as soon as he teaches me exactly what it is that he does, I'm going to kill him and steal his eight million. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, you're like more yeah, of a bitch than I was actually yeah, expecting. Yeah, you, you've not turned nice. You're actually just being horrible. Yeah, but she's played so well that I still kind of like her. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Um. So, yeah, that's a very... For probably the the next like thing that I enjoy the most about it, yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a fine like start to a show, but I think the first three episodes haven't like hooked me to the point where I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait to watch the next one. I'm just like, yeah, I'll, I'll see how it plays out. I think if I still feel this way by the end of the first season, for example, I maybe wouldn't bother with the second season. Yeah, see, I I I did enjoy it, and I am gonna watch the rest. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. I was watch annoyed the rest. that I couldn't watch them yesterday. Yeah. Not all of them, like, that I couldn't carry on watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I'll definitely watch the rest. So you'll hear kind of, uh, probably on the next housekeeping, we'll probably both be done, well, you'll definitely be done with it, and I probably will be. Um, so I guess you'll hear how we feel about all of it then. Yeah, yeah. But So have you got more stuff that you want to talk about about this, Liam? I don't, do you? Not particularly. I think we've covered most of the bases I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard with the show. Like, when we do TV shows... I think it's a lot harder than when we do like graphic novels or films because we t- we tend to do like a a whole package with those. Whereas yeah. with these, we, there's always this element of like, well, we don't we know could what's going to happen next. Yeah. yeah, it might change. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I feel like we've done a good job of kind of yeah, I mean, not, not to pat ourselves on the back too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fuck it, Liam. We've done a good job. We've done a good job of discussing essentially like three episodes of a ten episode TV show. Yeah, but we had the same issue with like Twin Peaks. Yeah, no, we definitely do. We it's it is the issue of doing three episodes or six episodes depending yeah. on the length. But I just don't think. Well, I know I can have got ten done in between recording sessions. Yeah, I mean you're you're the issue on it because I definitely could. Yeah, uh, but, but so listeners, if you want us to cover whole series in the future, complain to Liam. And well, equally, him. no, but this is what the the beauty of housekeeping is because it's not like we'll never talk about this again. No, oh, I'm never talking about it again. Well, um. What did you give the first three episodes, Liam? Out of five, five being good or the best, zero being the lowest. Um, three. Okay, yeah, average. Yeah, you? Uh, I'd give it a three point five. Okay, makes sense. Above average. Yep. Very good. Um. Oh God, it's your birthday, isn't it? Yeah, buddy. We've agreed, listeners, oh, that so for our birthdays, uh... we are allowed to recommend something and the other person has to do it there's no debate there's no well oh. no i think i think unless it's it can't be something ridiculous oh yeah well all right that's fair i'm not gonna do the stand no but then i'm also reasonable enough i i think you need that limitation more than me uh, yeah but like, i'm not gonna recommend the stand to you what would i recommend that would be like unreasonable oh you're gonna to recommend you? like a five hour film because you're an arsehole <laughs> a five hour mumble call yeah exactly and you know you will so no don't i i don't think i will actually Whereas I have been really fucking reasonable with this choice, I think. I would probably recommend something like Sunstone, to be honest, so... Yeah, see, that's the thing. I think we both think the other one's going to try and fuck us over. Yeah. But in reality, we just want to recommend good stuff. Yeah, but you know I've got issues. And you're not yes, taking you that do. into yes, consideration. No, yes, you do. No, don't, don't talk around it. Yes, you do have issues, you're right. You're not factoring that into your, oh, this is what we're doing. No, that's true. I'm not, because also part of my goal of this is to, like, help you. I How want is it to break you out me? of your... Because you're broken and I'm trying to fix you. Why? Because you need to be fixed, Liam. Says who? Oh, well, no one official because you haven't seen them yet. 
that's for that's for uh, Jack and Liam trying new things. Right. Okay. Liam gets therapy. I'm just so. Uh, sorry, just go, on. go on. No, I'm annoyed. That's Jack. fine. You can be annoyed. It doesn't matter. You'll enjoy this. It, no, the thing is, it's something that I do want to do. I'm just not doing it right, and that makes me very uncomfortable. Well, that's ridiculous. Right, listeners, it's what we ridiculous. are doing next You're time ridiculous. is we are doing the anime movie Princess Mononoke by Studio Ghibli. Now, what Liam is complaining about is, as I've probably mentioned on here, and Liam has probably mentioned on here, he has a need to watch for some reason everything that a studio has produced up till that point within certain constraints he could watch you know i imagine you could watch a universal film without going back and seeing universal's entire back catalog for example liam yeah so why is it different for studio ghibli i don't know exactly it just there we is. go it is so no it isn't no it isn't it's liam. because you're just broken no it's because i want to watch all of them that's fine watch them all no but it just it therefore makes sense for me to watch no them. it doesn't no, no, right, it makes sense no, for me. No, stop saying it makes sense. No, but for me. Yeah, but you're using make sense, which is a ridiculous statement. I know you're saying for me to quantify that, but don't. Just don't say makes sense. But it does make sense for me. It doesn't, though. No, but, but uh, you're missing the, the key part of that, Jack. I think what you need to say is it makes sense in my head. In my head it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because it's not for you, because like, I can tell you what makes sense for you. Because, like, if a doctor was like, oh, you've broken your arm, it makes sense for you to get that um, looked at. Yeah. That, that's a phrase that can be said. This doesn't make sense for you because it's feeding into your weird obsession that you don't want to have, Liam. The thing is, right, I do want to watch this film. That's it's good. We're watching it for the next episode. So. But I, I want an excuse to watch all of the Studio Ghibli's. And my excuse is to go, like, right, I'm going to watch them from the start all the way through, right? Now, if I start jumping in, like, midway through, I'm probably not going to watch all of the Studio Ghibli films, because why would I? I've, I, I'm not doing it in order. It's well, crazy. that's fine, Liam, because I, I hope you're aware, if you don't get around to watching all the Studio Ghibli films, they will all have come up on Culture Swap at some point, and you will be the one to blame for that. I doubt they will come up, all of them. Oh, they fucking will. If you don't go and watch the rest of Studio Ghibli at some point, I will keep adding them to this list. Um, yeah, so we're watching Princess Mononoke. Liam's going to suck it up and watch it like a man. No, so... he's going to moan about it. That's fine. Well, that, then it, you're going to look also, bad if you moan no, about it because also, you didn't watch it in order. Also, though, right, one other thing is I made, like, a pact with the listeners, okay, that you're now forcing me to break. Sorry, what was the pact you made? Uh, no more anime until we watch Barefoot again. Yeah, because no, I was like, no, no, you're right. Uh, right, no, you're right, Liam. That's thing. that's fair. What a fair pact for you to make. You made such a sacrifice. I don't think you really know what a pact is. I don't think you get to just. It's like me being like, you know what, Liam? You're right. I'm gonna make a pact. I'm gonna keep eating ice cream every day until we watch Princess Mononoke. Poor you'd me. That. You'd love that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, but no, and okay. you'd love to not watch any more anime. No, but that, there's a, one there was a like. reason for it in that you were like, "Oh, you hate anime," and I'm like, "No, I don't." And I wanted to show you an anime that I liked. So when you did recommend me anime in the future, you could be like, "Oh, well, I, I now know what he likes, so I have a better idea of if he's going to like what I want to recommend or not." You're right, Liam. You're right. I'm sorry that I've broken the storyline of Nerd on Nerd. <laughs> yeah, the you know, no, the, the Liam, listeners now are going to be like, "We can't trust them." Yeah, sure. I don't give a shit. We're watching Princess Mononoke. Happy birthday to Jack. Just why? <laughs> I like that you're still trying to talk me out of it if you think that I'm not stubborn enough to just stick to my guns on this. Okay, sure. Um, here's the issue, Jack. Go on, then. I've been eyeing up this uh, Studio Ghibli collection. It was released as a Blu-ray box set, okay? Yep. And at the moment, it's extortionately expensive. It's ridiculous. I'm livid at how much it is. I'm waiting for it to come yep. down in price. And now I'm going to have to get it, and I'm just living yeah. it. Do, do what I do, Liam. What? Rent it on Amazon. You thought I was going to say something illegal, Liam, but you've, I don't no, do illegal things. You've met I rent me. the videos on Amazon. You've met me. Yeah, you don't need... Yeah, if, you're, if you know you're buying the box set, yeah. then you don't need... You can just rent the video on Amazon, because you know that you're going to be buying the box set with it in it. I disagree. Because if I get this box set, it's going to add, like, like 12 yeah, to I the mean, list. Here's the thing, Liam. Again, right... Okay, let's just put this in in perspective for you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. One, it's your problem, not mine. This whole <laughs> obsession with watching things in order. That's got nothing to do with me. I don't care. You two, could be sympathetic two, to it, though. Two, if you want to watch all these films to watch Princess Mononoke, that's your choice. You've got two weeks. Do it. That's cool. I don't give a shit. I'd have to watch six films before it. 
that's fu- that's fine. That's doable. It's a lot. Six know. films is not that many. That's one every two days. But I've, yeah, but I've got to order the box set and then I've got to wait for it to get here as well. Uh, no, you don't. If you don't choose to do things in a reasonable manner, again, not my problem. If you have to buy the expensive box set to watch this because you refuse to take the easy option of renting the vi- the movie on Amazon, which is an option that you could easily take and it wouldn't impact you in any way, you could still buy the box set at a later date. That's, again, your problem, not mine. That's not... And that's not me, me, me being unreasonable. That's you I being unreasonable, unreasonable because unreasonable. you're not taking the easy option. Yeah, okay, carry on. No, that's it, three points. Those are three points, three counterpoints to why I think you're being unreasonable about what, not wanting to watch Princess Mononoke. I think the thing that annoys me the most, right, the thing yeah, that like on. really grinds my gears is that I know for a fact most of our listeners will agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that annoys you. Honestly, um, oh, really does wind me up. It's it's because Liam, I want you to not be like this because it would make this show easier. How? What do you mean? How? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You're literally arguing me about watching my recommendation for Culture Swap because you think you need to buy the ridiculously expensive box set. Imagine if you didn't need to do that, right? Just picture, picture you pitching this to me, and I okay. didn't own the box set, and I wasn't like you, which I'm not. I could just be. I was just like, oh, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, I'll rent it on Amazon Video. Look how quick that was, Liam. Imagine if we didn't have a 10-minute discussion at the end of this episode about you not wanting to watch this film because of your weird obsession. Yeah. Do you see, do you see Liam? I feel like you're just saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I, I feel like you're talking a lot, but I don't know if it's always making sense. Okay, well, I think you might be tuning out. So Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> let's wrap this thing up. Yeah. You're watching Princess Mononoke, so am I. We're going to talk about it next time. For your birthday if you've special. Princess Mononoke listeners, for my birthday special, it's Liam's birthday gift to me, and he's being so kind about it, and I just I just respect my friend. Honestly, <laughs> if anything, right, I, I, I would have been really nice for whatever I'm gonna, I would have chosen for you. How is but, this not nice? But the I fact think you're being that, so unreasonable. The fact that, I, Do you remember all the things that I was joking about recommending you? And I genuinely... This isn't a joke, Liam. This is 100%, I swear... Hand on heart, this is the truth. When we started talking about this, about a week ago maybe, yeah. I sat down and I genuinely went, what is something good I can do for Liam? And that <laughs> my idea was, I'm going to get a film, an anime, which I know he's not a fan of anime particularly all the time. So I was like, I need to give him a good one. I know that I've messed up on the last few and given him bad animes. So I want to give him something that I genuinely think Liam will like. So I thought about it and I went, yeah, Princess Mononoke, that's great. I'll be honest, your weird problems did not factor into this decision. I didn't do it to be mean. I didn't do it because I thought it'd be funny to watch you be like this. I genuinely didn't consider them, Liam, because they're insane and they're not a thing that reasonable people consider. So the fact that you are taking this so badly (laughs) is confusing as shit. It's like someone giving you a cake and you being like... I'm lactose intolerant. No, it's, How it's fucking like, dare you? And it's throwing it. It's like someone giving me a cake and me looking and go, oh, you know I don't eat chocolate. Yes, exactly, yeah. And then, and then you being like, you know what, for your for your next cake, I'm going to buy something horrible. I'm going to give you a cake of arsenic. <laughs> and I'm just being fucking confused as shit. Yeah, that's, that's what it's like. Just, Look, just I- figure out a way to watch this film. If you have to lie to yourself, Liam, about it, that's fine. I think I might just have to not watch the Studio Ghibli films in order, which is weird. It's bullshit. I've watched the Pixar films in order. That's fine. So I don't know why well, Studio Ghibli gets test. special treatment. Maybe this can be your test of what that's like. The thing is, right, I genuinely don't know why I'm so annoyed by it. Like, for some reason, like, this isn't me just kind of, like, putting it on. I am genuinely no, annoyed. No, no, I don't. And I, I know. I don't know why, because at uni, I had to watch Grave of the Fireflies. And I managed yeah. that okay, but for some reason, this has just really triggered me. I know, it's weird. I genuinely want you to know that I didn't do this to be mean to you. I feel like this whole conversation we've just had, maybe some of the Leah Metz are slipping into the jack-off corner. <laughs> it's alright, I'm probably going to edit a bunch of it out because we had this bit at the end, which is just us being like, neither of us know why you... <laughs> it's mainly neither of us know why you're so annoyed. No. Like, I know why you're annoyed, Yeah, but I didn't do it to be annoying. No, but I... I I'm trying to think, think of it as a uni assignment. It's not, though. It's a bit like a uni assignment. I don't know. Like, the, the thing is, right, there's a box set, okay? And I don't even know why I'm looking at it, but this is how broken don't I look am. look at it. This is how broken I am, Jack. There's a box set, and in it, there's what? Hang on, let me just count quickly. 11 films. Yep. Right? How much do you think how a much box is... set of 11 films is? They're blue, eh? I mean, it, okay, so... 
I mean, reasonably, what, £110, maybe? That seems like too much. £200. Oh, that's Don't do that, Liam. Well, no, I'm just looking at how much like the Princess Mononoke Blu-ray by itself is, just to see what, what value we're talking so the the Blu-rays by themselves are like fifteen quid. So does that work out as a good price? <laughs> no. What's eleven times fifteen? Not, not that. Not two hundred. No, it's one hundred and sixty-five. The thing is, I do already own this film as well. Don't buy the wait. Why are you buying the box set then? I don't own the others in it. That's fine, but you're not watching the others now. Ah, uh, well, no. No, but don't. <laughs> Don't. Oh, what would you do if the next episode I was like, right, so we're going to do a bit of an extended culture swap. <laughs> like like the Santa Claus trilogy all over you again. Did, you do all the Studio Ghibli films. I did all of them up to Princess Mononoke. Oh, I mean, it would annoy me. Yeah, it, it would be like the perfect... Um, revenge is a strong word. Again, I want you to focus. <laughs> I really want you to go away from this remembering that I didn't do this to annoy you. Yeah. I genuinely tried to be nice. Yeah, and, and if I was to watch all of them leading up to it, that wouldn't be me in retaliation being annoying. It would if you no. spoke about them on the episode. Oh, maybe if I went into detail, yeah. We'll see. I Honestly, I'm going to have to have a think about this, Jack. Please talk to Kat about this. And maybe no, she, she can won't explain help. to you. She won't help. She might. She won't. I'm having a big think. Okay. So that's what we're doing next time. <laughs> Fuck, if you've seen Princess Mononoke... Why don't you tweet us at nerd on nerd? Yeah. Yep. Good. Or they could email us, Liam. They could email us at nerd on nerd pod at gmail dot com. Yeah. Or they could Facebook us. Yep. Facebook dot com forward slash nerd on nerd pod or one word. Um. They could I don't know message us on YouTube or something. Yep. That's they could just search nerd on nerd and apparently we come up. Or one word I think. Cool. Go for it, listeners. I'm not sure. Just search also it and subscribe. see what happens. Yeah, we need those subscriptions. Thank you. Uh, oh, you can listen to us on SoundCloud. You probably are, but I don't know. Sometimes maybe iTunes or something. I don't know, Jack. I've got distracted. It's fair enough, Liam. They could go to SoundCloud. I think our SoundCloud link is... Um, a pod, pod. But with, like, little dashes, dashes in between. So that's just complicated, isn't it? Yeah. Why don't we have, like, a consistent naming thing? I think we both named different things and hadn't talked about it beforehand. Uh, I think it was more like, for example, we we got the nerd on nerd handle, but then we couldn't get nerd on nerd as an email, so we had to add the pod at the end. And yeah, and then it all got confusing. Any, anyway, you know, it's fine. Yeah, uh, they could also Liam. They could yeah. rate us on iTunes, which is apparently a good thing. Apparently, yeah. So go do that. Five stars. We if you, if will you want. read out um, any ratings we get or like reviews we get on iTunes. We will eventually. If we we haven't them. had any. We haven't had any. So Good. I do you check. check. Yeah, I Good. check. Liam checks. Don't. So we will read them. Yeah, that's it. I think. Any final thoughts? Um, I'm scared that you think I've been horribly mean to you, and I haven't. Bye. Bye. <laughs>